Hi everybody and a huge warm welcome to the final part of my three part series on connecting with the Fae and um, this part three is a little bit later than planned, a little bit later than planned maybe, um, but better late than never and this third part is about connecting with fairies in your home, um, bringing the, that magic into your daily life in the home setting and again it's just a, an introduction, there's loads more ways of, of, of working with fairies and also all the things I'm talking about we could go into probably a lot deeper than I will in this little introduction uh, but I thought I would just share some ideas and thank you for your lovely feedback about the, the previous two videos which I will link uh, to if you haven't seen them already. So as my first video of 2023, happy new year, I hope that uh, January is treating you as well as can be and um, that you're getting some time to rest up still I know we often rush into you know the January is where we're going to do all the things but um I think that everyone's been feeling with the, all the retrogrades but just life you know the exhaustion and needing to just take their time to emerge and not rushing into running around in normality and listening to your body and your soul and what it needs at this time so let's have a look at um this topic just also look at my tea as well. If you, um, it's Sons of Asgard tea. I highly recommend. It's called Freya's Love, and um, I'll pop a link to Sons of Asgard down there as well. They're a lovely bunch, um, and a lovely shop in Glastonbury. But you can go buy it online as well, and you can see my art in the shop as well. So if you are in Glastonbury, do pop into Sons of Asgard because uh, yes, they're lovely, a lovely team, amazing teas, and my art's in there as well. So all the win, really. <laughs> so. Freya's Love is my favourite of all the teas, though. They're all divine. Okay, so let's get our uh, teachy stick out. Yes, yes. And look at connecting with fairies at home. So the main theme around this is bringing the wild within. But this is in lots of different ways that we can work with this. In a very obvious way, in a very and a very clear way, we can... Um, connect with the fairies through the plant life in our home. We could nurture some house plants, we could grow some seeds. Um, this is a lovely way of, of, of creating a space where you connect with the fairies in, the, in your own home, uh, especially if maybe having an indoor herb garden, you could you could have um, fairy herbs such as thyme and rosemary and you could you could grow them and um, as you grow them you could honour the, the fae, you could honour the spirits of the plants as you're as you're growing them or as you're nurturing them and tending them. You may also wish to um, have an altar in your house, a fairy altar, but you may feel it's more apt for you to have the fairy altar in your garden, on your balcony if you if you have an outdoor space. Um, if you if you don't have an outdoor space or you'd actually like them to be in within wh where you are where you do your magic where you um focus your energy then having a fairy altar in your home is absolutely lovely and you could use sort of, sort of talking about bringing the wild in you could um use the things that you find on your walks and on your adventures to maybe you find a feather maybe you find a, a hagstone or um, a shell or just something that feels really gifted to you and you could have they could all hold a special place on your altar I think that can be nice if you've got really lovely things you might not want them to be outside or they might get ruined or blown away um, but you can create an indoor and an outdoor fairy space if you like it can be absolutely beautiful to have both if that's possible but creating an altar inside it doesn't have to be epic it could be a really um simple affair and what would be nice within that is something to represent the elements the different elements so you would maybe want to have a feather or some incense for air or both you can always use the feather to um to kind of waft is there a better word than waft but you know we'll go with waft uh the incense around your sacred space move bless you know lots of words but i've gone with waft classy um and you could um have those two elements representing air and then you could have a candle for fire obviously it's kind of a simple one but as long as you're able to have candles where you live other options are you know you can have things that represent fire you could have a a, a false flame you could have 
um, some crystals of red and gold and orange. You know, you can make it work. It doesn't have to be exactly um, the elements. And you could maybe even dedicate your cooking space to the, the fire elements and the fey elements if you wanted to. That's a different story. Um, but maybe you want to, of course, water for water. Kind of simple with that. But um, maybe you've got a lovely bowl or, a, a, you know, something that really, something shimmering, you know, find the things that really relate to you and your connection with the Fae. Um, and with Earth, of course, a plant, a stone, a crystal, something that you find on your journeys or you have that makes you feel this is, this is my, this is my, this is my deep connection to the wild, to the Fae. And that would be really all you would need. You may want to put some art on there or a little statue. It's not necessary though. You, it, go with what you feel. Um, and if you're doing it outside, you could have maybe a little log, which you put your uh, uh, offerings on, maybe a fairy door. So many different options there. And there's some lovely ideas where you can like paint your own fairy door as well. There's just little things you can create. Um, I think it doesn't matter at all if something is fancy or basic. It matters if you've got heart and love in it. So if you create something that you've, you know, you've made yourself, that is going to be worth so much more than if you spend, you know, fortune because you but you don't really want you know you're not really feeling sure about it you just spend a lot you're not sure what to do um just taking the time i think that the fairy really you know especially with people we are so many things <laughs> um but we, we you know we, we run around we flap around we don't often give time and we'll come back to that in a second and uh, if you give this time is it is an act of of, of self-giving and sacrificing your time to create something for the Fae, then it will be appreciated. It will really be appreciated. And it can, you know, it can hold some real magic and meaning to you, which maybe you want to share with your family or your kids at a later date as well. So it can be really a lovely treasure you can pass on. Um, so that's a little bit about, you know, just creating a sacred space where you can connect with the Fae. We're going to talk a bit about the uh, things you could do at those altars in just a second. But um, I, I not challenge invite you i think is the right word to if you don't have it already to create a sacred space in your home it could be very very small little uh shelf space it could be a table it could be grand it could be anything that you would dedicate to the fae and doesn't and please don't have that sy syndrome of oh i don't know i'm not good enough to create this i'm not witchy enough i'm not. no no just do things place things on a space that remind you there's no wrong you know i'd say avoid maybe putting iron on there and stuff like that there's kind of very strong uh faux pas with fairy but as long as you feel like there's something really heart connection you know to, to you and towards the nature spirits make that lovely space at home and and tend it altars do need tending they really really do um they do kind of get the stagnant grumpiness or lethargic energy if they aren't fed energy so maybe giving offerings giving um time thoughts meditations um speaking connecting leaving little gifts um we'll come on to gifts in a second as well so yes creating that space and really it's, it's not a stagnant space it is a, a living space it's a connected space when we think of the fae they they move between this world and the other world they flip between the two when you're creating a space in your home where you're inviting the, the, the spirits that you want in, the fae that you want in, the, the friends, the, the connections. And you could even maybe write a letter to invite the fairy guides in, or you could do a little ritual to call in, you know, the, the, the fairy friends, the ones that are going to, that have done for hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years, uh, connected with people that are open to that adventure. So there's a couple of little things to do within your home. Outdoor altars also great, and also just working the garden, working the land is an amazing, um, wonderful, wonderful way of connecting with the spirits of, of nature. You don't have to have an indoor space. You can simply dedicate your gardening, your time in, in the land to working with the nature spirits and the fae. So when I'm saying bringing the wild in, I of course mean, you know, the around here the feathers and the, the random things that I found on my walks that come home with me um, but I also mean um, allowing your time inside when you're in your home to be open to wonder to be silent to be receptive to reconnect to your own wild self and that can be hard when phones are always doing their thing or people always wanted things from you and there's a million things that keep us in that busy distracted mode which is obviously not healthy for a long, but you know, for anyone, but also not healthy for connecting with those energies that, that come through the heart, that come through 
the the soul if we can't hear our own soul then we can't, definitely can't hear anybody else uh communicating with us so bringing making that practice of finding space for yourself maybe practice you know taking the phone away for a bit uh, put it on airplane mode or whatever um and quietening the thoughts being really observant of our inner chatter our inner dialogue um because that can be very strange we, we kind of realize i've got the things that are chattering on our heads all the time so taking some deep breathing activities just to quieten and, and quieten the, the chatter the way i like to do that the, the best way i found for me that works is to do listening exercises so just to listen to everything in your near like in your room so you just spend a few minutes you're breathing deep and you're listening to everything in the near vicinity then you send your hearing out that bit further and you listen to everything in the slightly further vicinity maybe just outside your house and then you again expand your uh, awareness and you listen to everything that's uh, maybe half <laughs> a mile away or like you know as, as far as your ears can hear a mile away might be a little bit exaggerating but you know as far as your ears can hear and it shifts your mind you, you can't really go natter 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 because you're listening you're so present you're so in the moment you're so aware of what's going on and that can be just really um brings you into the present very healing very much an active awareness and from that space we're able to understand more what's happening around us and be more open to communication from fairy um and maybe before you go into it any of this of yeah, I, I like to do this as well in meditations to have like a, a psychic treasure trunk where i just chuck all my stuff in mentally before i get involved so you can everything you're worrying about today if it's on your mind da -da, boom goes in the treasure trunk lock it up you can't dump it forever unfortunately some of those things you know you do need it you pay your bills and stuff um you know um you have to pick it up before you when you leave the meditation maybe some of them have gone though that's what i always find don't you know you have a little, all these things on your mind and you okay i'm putting them at the door i'm leaving them in that trunk and when you come out of it maybe some of those things aren't important anymore you know it could be a bit of a shift in energy to notice that but yeah it could be good to give yourself how long a day 20 minutes 10 minutes what could you give this connection with fairy just like put everything in the trunk for a bit and maybe sit by your altar or do a meditation and um, there's some lovely ones online. I think I've got some on my website as well. Some fairy meditations. And um, maybe write, you know, you maybe become inspired in some way. You could maybe give this time to writing to, uh, or creating in an honouring of the fairies as well. So there could be something you'd like to do with that. Um, so, yeah, doing exercises which bring you present in the moment. It's obviously good for our mental and emotional health, <laughs> but it's also good for opening that field of connection up. Um, offerings and gifts, little sacrifices, they do love presents. They love gifts. I think I've mentioned this several times before. So um, suitable gifts are things that are biodegradable, are things that are not going to pollute or ruin nature in any way. There's lots of people tying bits of plastic onto trees. Nah, don't no need to do that. <laughs> Biodegradable things, ribbons that are gonna, you know, that will degrade absolutely fine. Um, but offerings that can be really helpful or, or, or lovely are um, really wholesome foods. Um, you know, kind of really maybe bread, um, a cake. Maybe you've baked something. Um, maybe you've got some nice bread and uh, butter, and or a, a, a kind of vegan butter's fine too. You know, it's all fine. Um, or maybe you want to give. Um, an offering of mead, um, mead and honey, those kind of things are very much appreciated by the fae. But if you've got a nice bit of cake or you've got something that you are willing to offer a bit of the fairy plate, willing to offer some of your meal to the fae, it is a traditional way of connecting with them and can be a really nice way of, of uh, creating that friendship. You could leave it inside or outside depending on where your altar is. Um, what I would say is don't just leave it there because you know it's the energetic sharing unless an animal eats it you know it's not going to get eaten and i think a rotting thing on an altar or going off thing on the on an altar from experience where i've actually made that mistake before isn't great so just kind of um you know giving of something is the energetic giving or you may want to libate it onto the land that could be a really nice idea as well I told you i'm going on <laughs> i've got a list here but i have to um 
I can do more videos like this. If this is a video that you like, would like to know more about this topic or have any questions, do let me know in the comments and we can do more videos like this. I'm trying to keep this a little bit shorter than a long waffle. Um, but as I mentioned, meditations and journeys are great. So if you have a meditation that you do, that can lead you to fairyland, that can lead you to your fairy guides. Um, I do loads on my fairy awakening course. We have plenty of meditations, but you may have some already yourself at home. Um, that you also music that you listen to which helps you connect with them um doing that regularly because it is a gateway like meditations and journeys they are creating that space between the worlds to experience things and uh, to uh and it's not just your imagination that's a whole other story but people often say when they're you know meditating or journeying or doing this for you know for the first time yeah but it's just my imagination it is another video but no <laughs> not just your imagination and I always say that if it was just your imagination where did your imagination come from you know where did that come from anyway mm -mm -mm. Uh, talking of nice teas uh, working with herbs also is a really lovely way of connecting with the face maybe you want to learn about um, herbal law maybe you want to learn about healing with the herbs or different properties or maybe you want to create potions and or aromatherapy or scents and, and, and healing balms a wonderful way of connecting with the fae and, and the magic of the land so you don't even have to create anything you could just learn something about it maybe grow those plants around you um and also learning about the flowers learning about the plants um i, I always find that the, the, the uh, snowdrops at imok are very much a place of magical fairy connection as we're approaching here in the northern hemisphere towards Imok and then bluebells bluebell woods in May or April sometimes a bit earlier aren't they are the ultimate place for if, you know that's a very well known place of you know don't mess with the fairies of the bluebells because you'll never get seen again <laughs> there's a sort of the folklore but it's it's a very powerful place to connect with the fae um, but I found that my one of my earliest connections with this plant spirits with, with the lavender plant that I was growing so plants that are easy accessible to to work with and quite hardy um, and create lovely system that's the bees like it's supporting all nature when you're working with the fair you're supporting all of nature you're putting flowers in your garden or your balcony that are going to attract the bees you know and the butterflies and you're creating a space of, of, of safety for nature and that's a wonderful place a wonderful way to connect with the fair also before I go look at some rituals that you, you know you can I won't go into rituals now again that can be another video if you would like it to be um, but you could um, if you are inclined to do more formal, not too formal, but you know, magic where you cast a circle and you call in the elements, you can work with the elemental spirits, the um, you know, the, the sylphs of the air, the undines or the mermaids of water, salamanders of fire, and the gnomes of the earth. Also, you can there's a lot of the, a lot of other. You can work with the stars. You can work with the ancestors and the spirits below. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can call in those elemental beings, those uh, spirits, and to work with them in a really positive way as well. And to get to know the spirits of place as well. So that's a, another massive video to do. But the spirits of place, where you live or a place that you love to be. Yeah, that's a, a wonderful way of connecting with the fairy realm because you're um, building that connection with the land and honouring the land that you live in and the, the, the nature around you. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm going to um, wind it in now because I think there's a lot on this list, but I could do another video about all of this. I want to keep this for about twenty minutes. But other ways of working is once you've done this circle, you can create a charm. You can create a fairy charm. You can create a fairy bottle, which is like putting a lot of the uh, treasures that you find that you connect with the fae in a, in a magical bottle, or making a spell bottle. Um, you can also connect with the fae, or in this circle, you can create a poem. You could write a poem, or you could recite your favorite poem, or you could. Uh, fairies love music so that you could you know, so listening to music that's very fairy inspired that you find it to be or creating music um that is an honoring to the fairies is a gift to the fairies is no matter you don't have to feel like you're a musician it just means that you're making something you're creating something a song um which is honoring the fae and they absolutely love song it's a heartfelt gift and a truly treasured one as well so, okay, there was a lot more things I could say. I am going to wind it in now. I would say also painting and drawing. I can't wind it in, can I? Any of the creative tasks that you're doing in honouring of the Fae is a way to connect with them. You could do it in your sacred space. You could do it by your altar. You could do a little sketch or create a collage and put that upon your altar as well. So these are a few hints and tips how inside your home, in your 
um, in your own environment, garden and home, you can create um, a connection with the Fae that is strong, that is powerful, and it's very healing for you and for um, the bond between humans and the other world, because when we bring that wildness in, uh, we remember who we truly are. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all really, really soon. Take care and let me know if these kind of videos are what you would like to see. Uh, okay.